YouTube and welcome to another Doctor Who product review. Today I'm taking a look at a rather special product and it's one that I picked up at the Doctor Who Festival and it is the Big Chief 12th Doctor 1 6th scale limited edition collector series figure as seen in series 9, this time it's the purple variant version as seen in Fist the Raven and I also believe the series 9 final. So here is the box itself, now compared to last time when I reviewed the first Doctor figure there has actually been a few running changes for this design that's made it more relevant to the 12th Doctor era which makes it look really nice and series 9-ish. So as you can see at the front there at the bottom we have the 12th Doctor there with this really nice design effect and then just above this we have the cog design this has been really nicely done actually as you can see it's glossy and reflects really nicely and this continues all the way around the box. At the centre of the front piece we have the Doctor Who Series 9 logo as well as the BBC one. Then just above this we have the cog design printed once again along with one sixth scale limited edition collector series figure. Taking a look at the side of the box as you can see we have this really nice image there of Peter Capaldi. This time it's from the Series 9 promotional material. They've also added some Gallifrey text on there which is nice which leads to the DW logo at the bottom there. Taking a look at the opposite side we have once again another image of Capaldi. As you can see there we have the cog design printed along with the nice image of Capaldi from the Series 8 promotional material and more text at the bottom. The back of the box is the same design layout as last time with the first Doctor figure but as you can see this time they change it slightly we have the Series 9 TARDIS there with the red lighting along with the BBC logos at the top the Big Chief logo and the other figure represented here as this is an exclusive figure they didn't go through the efforts to make a new box which is understandable because it would be quite expensive to do and I don't personally mind. Then at the bottom there we have the Doctor Who logo along with some information about the 12th Doctor. So much like last time, this is in fact a magnetic lid that can be removed to reveal the TARDIS interior. Taking a look on the inside of the box, as you can see we have the figure there displayed nicely with all the different parts. And then we have the same on sixth scale information and the title of the figure printed once again. Down the sides of the box we have some promotional images as seen on the Big Chief website as well as the specifications. And then the same story for the opposite side of the box with more promotional material, but this time a list of the accessories and also a few more images. At the top of the box we have Doctor Who and the same information repeated once again and then at the base of the box you have the company information as well as the limited edition icon and number. As with last time the same format appears so we have the figure and its accessories displayed in the first tray along with their orange background. Second tray features the stand as well as the TARDIS. So here is the figure in all its 1 6th scale glory. Now when I first initially opened this figure, I was absolutely blown away by the amount of detail it has. Once again, they have failed to disappoint over for it, Big Chief because this figure is absolutely amazing. First I'm going to be taking a look at the clothing and the head and then I'll be going on to the accessories themselves. So taking a closer look at the body, as you can see much like Hartnell, this has been individually tailored, all the different pieces and things, to a 1 6th scale figure and once again it doesn't disappoint. So kicking off, at the bottom we have the white shirt, this is quite generic, much like the Hartnell figure, it's sort of a similar idea. As you can see there we have the white material underneath, this has been brilliantly done, it does stretch all the way down the arms as an actual shirt would do. Top here we have the stitching lines and things along with three buttons which have been glued onto the top here. And then we also have the collar all the way around, taking a look at the sides moving back the waist cut there we do have more detailing that goes all the way around. And then the collar does in fact get stitched to the back also. The front piece of the waist cut itself is quite a velvety style material, much like how it is in the series itself quite a different material compared to the rest of the figure much like the velvet jacket actually but as you can see we have all different bits of detailing on here this is black though so if you do have this on a surface I would be aware of getting any little bits of um, hair or anything on it you know or just little bits of dust and things is quite a pain to get off but as you can see down the front here we have the addition of quite a few buttons going all the way down as well as the little one peeking out at the bottom there up, as you can see I have more little bits sort of a material effect on the inside of the actual waistcoat itself and also moving up we have the rest of the white shirt under there as as well. As you can see taking off the jacket we can see the waist cut a bit better there. Once again it's sort of the same thing as the Hartnell figure, just sliding back the arms and removing the hands will allow you to pull off the velvet jacket. Of course that will be going on a little bit later when we take a look at that. And I'm glad that I actually took the coat off because this is honestly a really nice part of the costume. As you can see this red velvet piece stretches around to the back here. This is of course the back of the waist cut. This has been really well stitched together. At the bottom here what I really do like is we have this nice little belt bit that's been really nicely stitched onto the waist cut. So we have this little ribbon going along here 
here and then even the addition of the actual buckle itself along with the spare piece of material coming along here that just sits around there now the coat is off we also have a bit of a clearer look at the arms as you can see the stitching comes all the way down what i love is we also have the detailing of the cuffs there which have been really nicely stitched together we also have the addition there of the really nice little cuff piece which have been really well added to the figure as you can see it's on both sides there where we even have the little gap between the shirt i do love that attention to detail there so one of the main attractions for this figure is the red velvet coat as seen in sort of the last three episodes of series nine including face the raven take a look at the inside before it goes back on the actual figure itself as you can see just the detailing of the velvet red lining has been brilliantly done honestly this is absolutely flawless it goes all the way down to the arms as well it's been brilliantly stitched together so what is a really nice feature and sometimes quite hard to actually capture when on the figure itself connecting together here we do actually have a magnet connects the button together you can sort of see the magnet outline there in between the actual jacket but as you can see we can actually magnetize the button there this is the second button on the coat itself which does allow for the coat itself to close completely which i do really like that feature even if it is sometimes quite hard to use so placing the jacket back on does allow us to take a look a bit more at the red velvet detailing as you can see all the way around the figure we do have this sort of lighter stitching line which has been really well added the collar has also been stitched individually as you can see it goes all the way around even to the back there which has been really nicely done this even follows around to these stitching lines on the back as you can see there this does lead down from the stitching lines and then we also have this back stitching line on the arms themselves which once again just these small details make it look even more realistic to what it does already at the front there we do have the addition of the two buttons on this left hand side as you can see these have been nicely added on these have even been sewn on just taking a look on the inside there then at the right hand side we don't have two buttons this time we only have the one button at the top there and also there is the magnet underneath the material where you can try and fix these two parts together moving back the arm there we do also have this pocket this is in fact a real pocket so you can sort of fit his hands in there or something or just say item to keep safe so that is a really nice feature and then to the other side as well we also have another pocket which as you can see there in the light even has red lines how excellent is that much like the 11th doctor figure there is also a pocket on the inside which once again does in fact actually work and that is an excellent place to start the sonic screwdriver moving down to the lower parts of the clothing now of the figure we have the trousers these have been excellently done once again they are quite simple much like the actual trousers in the show sliding up the waist cut slightly we do reveal a belt now this has been really well done once again we have a rather pleather style material effect now this does in fact go all the way around the trousers we even have this spare piece here which has been excellently done this does actually lead all the way around the trouser to the side there we even have the little hooks keeping it in place which i find brilliant and what i like is we also have the addition of the buckle there which has been really nicely done moving down the trousers not really too much to talk about we have the stitching lines there of the zip piece and then also moving around to the side we also have the addition of the pockets once again these do actually work and if posed correctly you can in fact make his hands fit in there to sort of make it look like he's got his hands in his pockets once again the same applies for the opposite side and taking a look to the back we also do have two pockets on either side and once again a button is added to the side and down the trousers not really too much to talk about to be honest but they have been really nicely stitched together at the very bottom of the trousers we have this rim piece which have been really nicely sculpted and stitched together moving on to the boots now now these have been brilliantly done this is sort of like a plastic pvc piece the amount of sculpting on this is also brilliant we have the different stitching lines and stipple effects here at the front we do have sort of the areas where the shoe has actually been stitched together so the different sorts of material effects have been added there and then towards the top we even have the addition of the laces there these have been sculpted on really nicely towards the back we also have these sort of support parts of the shoe and then we'll even have the sole there towards the bottom we have sort of a bit of a stitching line which has been sculpted on and at the very bottom here we have the very sole of the shoe now this is unusually made of quite a clear plastic which has sort of been painted which i'm guessing that's how it's like in the program but as you can see there we do have the sculpting of sort of some tread marks and things which is really nice moving on to articulation now it is physically impossible to go over every single bit of articulation on this but as you can assume so we have a ball joint at the head which means it can obviously move from side to side up and down all sorts we also have a pivot up here as well which means that he can look down even more of the pivot here once again with the waist articulation doubling up there as well leg articulation is also a board joint as well so it can move out to the sides and things of course there is some limitations of the clothing as you can see we can bend at the knee there we also have a board joint pivot at the boot as well then at the arms of course we also have a board joint and then that can move around also and then a bend at the elbow 360 and a board joint at the wrists we have literally all sorts which means that this figure can be posed in all different excellent ways on to the head now big chief have gone with the decision to actually use the time of the doctor head that came with the 11th doctor figure the purple one from series 7 which i do like that choice because once again that is accurate to series 9 a little bit more as in first the raven and in other stories he does have the longer hair i do like this more than the other version that comes with the series 8 doctor as well so that's sort of a bonus for me 
as you can see on the face, um, where on earth do I start? It is, it's Peter Capaldi. Once again, much like the Hartnell figure that I previously reviewed, this sculpt is absolutely flawless. Just taking a look first at the eyes, as you can see, these have been really well done. Much like the Hartnell figure, once again, they've added this rather glazed sort of glossy effect over the eyes, which as you can see, when I just generally naturally turn them in the light, you can actually see the reflection coming in from the window reflecting on the eyes, which I just love that. It makes it look very natural. And then along the sides of the eyes, we also have this red effect, which sort of makes it look rather damp which is brilliant and then around the actual skin itself we have all the different bags under the eyes and things i think that this is definitely brilliant there as you can see just all these little lines and things as well as this we also have the little stippled effects around the nose and things definitely creating this nice sort of creased sort of wrinkled effect which i really really love we have these little creases running down to the sides of the mouth there the mouth itself has been painted really well we have the different sculpting in there and the different lines and things again it looks very very natural and things which i just love the way that they've done that and then i just love the way how the mouth looks very natural moving up to the nose there we have sort of the hole up there and all the different shading lines I just... underneath the actual jawbone as well we have the different stippled effects there to sort of create this sort of shading of skin which i love then moving around to the sides once again sort of on the cheekbones here we sort of have a different shading of skin which and then moving up to the top there we of course have the attack eyebrows i just think that those are brilliantly done just then moving it into the light i think that looks very creepy but brilliant at the same time moving around to the sides of the face we have the ears which the ears alone are just sculpted brilliantly we have the different lines and things in there and then the hair as well this has been really well done much like other figures and things the gray has been added brilliantly i think that we have the darker gray and then the lighter gray tones it added on top to bring out the highlights and things I love the way we have these sort of rogue bits of hair which sort of spread across to the ears and things, some wrapping under the ears, some over the top, which makes it look very natural, much like how it is in the actual show these different lines in there it really does bring out the detail amazingly and then moving up to the actual top itself it sort of curls a little bit more which i like the front ones itself is sort of rather puffy so we have this puffed effect at the beginning here and then we even have these little separate hairs which have been sort of sculpted towards the sides of the face which i just love that little bits of attention to detail taking a look at the neck not too much to talk about really but we do have that line there which could be improved i guess in places but it's not obviously it's not that bad we also have just a bit of skin tone sculpting on there not too much to talk about really although we do sort of have the neck detailing the bone and things added in there along with the Adam's apple as well now as i mentioned previous this figure does also come with the tardis backdrop that is sort of like the lid of the box as you can see it's got the series 8 and 9 red lighting effect which looks absolutely brilliant and as you can see this sets off the figure really well when on display and it's a great little design choice because it sets off the figure really really well now going on to the accessories now a big majority of these are different sculpting of hands which is actually quite nice this one is one of my favorites it is the nice little series 8 promotional material hand as you can see this has all been widespread and things very nice the different hands have the same detailing on as the veins and a bit of the bone sticking out there which is great and all the different skin tones have been added brilliantly next up to accompany this we have more of a sort of open palm hand for the right hand side this time so as you can see more detailing on there but this time all of the right hands of course come with the ring on this has been detailed really well actually we have the gold there along with the gr little green dot at the top there to represent the gem so that's nice so then we have the left hand side sort of holding hand as you can see this has been detailed well but then on the other side we have two fingers sort of quite closed and then the other two on top sort of a bit open this is so that he can hold different things and it's sort of sculpted so it's all flimsy and things so you can actually hold a lot of different things with these hands. The other version is once again just basically that hand but for the opposite right hand side once again the same detailing of the ring has been applied there. And we have the one day I shall come back style of hand as you can see this is sort of like a closed fist. Once again there's two of these for each individual hand. For some reason on mine it does seem that the thumb is actually sculpted down into the hand there as you can see it's not actually one separate piece unlike my William Hartnell figure so I don't know if that's a running thing with this figure but yeah it is still okay. And then next up we have the other hand once again in the closed position there. And then finally we have another hand, this has sort of just been sculpted to hold different things, whatever you decide for him to hold. So yeah, that's a nice hand there. Moving on to the more accessory style of things now, first off we have of course the Sonic Screwdriver. This is one of two different versions that we have. As you can see this one is the closed one, more suited to the 12th Doctor. But as you can see it's been detailed brilliantly there, we have the different copper sections, the gold sections, the green emitter, the black handle. Honestly this has been really nicely done as you can see there with all the different sculpting, once again a brilliant Sonic. I do believe this is probably the same one that comes with the 11th Doctor they don't really have any reason to change it but yeah it's a great little item and great for him to hold and display with. Then next up for Sonics we have the other version this one is once again the open version now technically this shouldn't really come with this figure as it's more of the 11th Doctor style of thing but I don't really mind anyway it's nice that they've packaged it with it personally it doesn't really matter for me but yeah as you can see this one is the open emitter version with the claws there it has been excellently detailed all the different greens in there and things I really do like the way that the claws are actually separate along with the really nicely sculpted green emitter at the top there it is a brilliant sculpt. 
Next up for accessories, we have one of the two TARDISes that were of this set. As you can see, this one is the Siege Mod version, and I love this. As you can see on all the different sides, you have all the different Gallifreyan detailing on there. It's honestly a brilliant little thing for the size. I also like the way there's sort of been a blue tinge added to the top there to make it look like it's a glowing. It's a nice little TARDIS. Next up, technically, we actually have another hand. This one is the Gauntlet version. As you can see, this is from the Robots of Sherwood there. There's some really nice detailing on, actually. You have all the different creasing, a few little stitching lines on there and things. Not really too special. On the other side there, as you can see, you have all the different sculpting of the different creasing lines in there and things and also of all the fingers which have been detailed nicely these don't in fact move like the actual hands or anything they're just sort of in one stuck position and then to go with the gauntlet we of course have the little tiny spoon as you can see this has been detailed really well for the size actually you have all the different pen apps and things in there it looks brilliant and even on the handle we sort of have a bit of engraved detailing in there which is just brilliant for the size and then taking a look at the back it's just sort of the generic silvery color and then this can just be placed there into the top finger of the gauntlet and then we have the doctor with his spoon Boom. Next up, we have the yo-yo. Now, this is one of quite a few figures, actually, to come with a yo-yo. As you can see, this one's yellow. We have a bit of detailing on there, sort of a wood grind effect. And then we also have the white circle. And then, of course, you have a little bit of string, which, of course, reveals the yo-yo itself. Now, this is good, actually. We even have a little hoop there at the end for the figure to be displayed with. It's actually quite a long string, as you can see. It does work, sort of. It's not exactly a yo-yo, but I really like the displayability of this. I've had fun, sort of, making the Doctor look like he's playing with it. But, yeah, it is a brilliant little accessory. Next up, we have the Mummy on the Orange Express Jelly Bear baby casket as you can see this has been detailed brilliantly a little jelly baby sat in there which has been brilliantly done we have the different painted faces and things which i do really like along with the little band there which sort of holds them in place that is a really nice piece i do also like the silver lining on that and then taking a look at the back there it's just sort of a black piece now it is sculpted to make it look like it is sort of something that would close but obviously with it being one thing it's sort of quite hard to do that so i don't actually mind that it can't close it is just one static piece there the psychic paper now this has been sculpted sort of in an open position which is okay as you can see that it's got that pleather detailing effect but also on the other side we have sort of some weird detailing on there that i never knew that was actually on the psychic paper on the inside we don't really have too much to talk about it's just got the white piece there not really too much but it is in the open piece position next up we have something that wasn't actually meant to come with this figure but due to a production thing we do now have it which is brilliant because it's honestly one of my favorite little things ever as you can see it's the tiny little flatline TARDIS and doesn't it look brilliant I would honestly go as far to say this probably has more detail than the 3.75 TARDIS that was released a few months back as you can see that it's been brilliantly done for the sides of police public car box at the top with the windows which have been brilliantly done then we even have the little details of the sticker with the writing on there taking a look at the sides you have all the different wood grain effects on the side of the TARDIS and all the different paint apps it has honestly for the size it's been brilliantly done then on the top there and the rounder side you have the police public car box printed once again it's ordered the same on each individual side which has been really well done at the top there we even have the little addition of the lamp which i just find brilliant honestly i cannot emphasize this enough it is a brilliantly detailed little prop and then you guessed it the doors can actually open I'm speechless. As you can see there at the moment, we have the little TARDIS interior inside, which does actually have a whole feature of itself. The TARDIS interior is in fact one of interiors that can come with this TARDIS. As you can see, just sliding out there a little bottom, it is a cardboard piece, which does of course slip into the bottom. As this is cardboard, it is of course a little bit weak, but hey ho, you can't really do anything about that. You can see that's been really well done. Now this is just brilliant. It does also come with some other little inserts, which is just, I'm speechless at this. So just sliding it in the bottom there, through the bottom, we have Peter Capaldi staring out the TARDIS. Honestly, how you can't get any better than this. So that is just a brilliant little feature added there. The final card uses the little hole as seen in the back of the TARDIS with Peter Capaldi there. Just sliding this in the bottom. Lining this up with the hole allows for you to do something. Now, if you use some of these spare joint parts that have been added also with this figure, you can then place this inside. You guessed it, you can literally have a hand sticking out the TARDIS, which is just a fun little novelty thing. I just love this. It's a brilliant little feature. Honestly, for the size, how can you not like this? It is amazing. Then also just giving you a little view of what it looks like with Peter Capaldi there in his hand. I find that actually quite amusing, but it is a brilliant little way that they've added it. It's so clever as well, the way that they've done it. Moving on, now we have the Certificate of Authenticity. This is actually inside of like a weird cling film thing. I'm going to keep it in this for protection reasons, but as you can see there, just have a few things on there. And then on the back, we have the Certificate of Authenticity once again with a bit of information about the figure. So that is a nice little bonus to the set. 
And then also with this figure, we have the plaque once again on the blue outline there. This isn't actually stuck down. I've just put it on with blue tack because for some reason I don't like to stick them down completely. Yeah, that's been nicely done. But as you can see there on the front, we just have a bit of information with the number, which mine is 37 out of 100. The figure also comes with a stand. As you can see, it's sort of the same design as last time. We have the blue frame around the outsides and then the reflective piece in the middle, which is rather well done. We do have the stand piece that comes out the back. But as you can see, this one does seem to sort of warp away from the actual stand itself, which I don't really know why it does that really. But placing it down on a flat surface and bringing on the figure as you can see peter capaldi is naturally taller than my william hartnell figure but as you can see that the figure doesn't actually tend to be supported on the stand itself due to him being a bit taller and this piece does in fact end up not actually being right under where it's meant to be supporting but yeah i do find that the support is a little bit not so good as the william hartnell figure but i do think that that's down to just generally how tall peter capaldi is in general and then transferring over into darkness, we do have the same feature as last time, where if you turn on the base, as you can see, we have a light up little image of some Gallifreyan text resembling that of number 12. This is a very nice feature. As of last time, it doesn't actually provide any light to the figure, and it's not like the Hot Toys ones where you actually have the movable lights or things. It's just a generally nice little novelty thing, which I do really like. It's a nice little thing for the figure itself, and I'm glad that they do add them, as it's a quite a nice little special thing for each individual figure. So overall for this figure, honestly, what can I say other than it's absolutely amazing just down to the figure itself and the likeness on the head as well as the tailoring on the costume and things honestly there is not one thing that i can point out being bad with the costume just the detailing alone and the way that it's been translated into figure form is absolutely astonishing down to the little accessories as well like the hands and things and the little siege mode tardis the sonic screwdriver the yo-yo all those little tiny details have been done brilliantly and once again they look just like that on screen counterparts and as well the little tiny tardis with all the little inserts and things the amount of features that ha that has a it's absolutely amazing and as well just for the tiny little size that it is it honestly blows my mind the way that big chief make products because honestly it is paying for quality as i mentioned at the start of this review this figure was a connex exclusive meaning it's only available at the doctor who festival and the birmingham convention i do believe that big finish go to no doubt a few will find their ways online but unfortunately as this figure is only limited to 100 i can honestly not say where you can buy this because as it's limited to that convention only i don't actually think that this product will ever actually be available on the website itself because as far as what I heard they're near enough sold out at the Doctor Who festival and quite rightly too because this figure is brilliant. Quite honestly if you have the opportunity to pick this figure up for the region that it even sold for go and buy it because it is absolutely amazing. This product was a little bit more than the standard one as it was £190 as opposed to the £169 of the Crombie Court flatline version which is the standard release so I'd highly recommend trying to get that one as well if you can't buy this one. So that's that overall a brilliant figure and I would highly recommend it. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a big like and please subscribe if you're not already. If you have any questions, please do leave them below and I'll be sure to answer them at some point in the near future. Thanks again for watching and I shall see you all next time. So thanks for watching and bye for now.